Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. Our friends over at Reign of Sound, over on the West Coast, sent us over these brand new speakers that debuted today. These are the ARC Audio Moto CX-6. These speakers are brand new. They are the upgrade to last year's weather-resistant motorcycle speakers by ARC Audio. ARC Audio is a great company. We were ARC Audio dealers many years ago, and it's actually the first high-quality mini amplifier we ever used. And uh, they were the ARC Minis. And we used to use them in cars because they were awesome sound quality amplifiers that fit just about anywhere. When we hopped into the motorcycle game years ago, of course, we started ARC Audio. To this day, the ARC Audio PSM is still one of my favorite DSPs. It's one of the only DSPs on the market that's weatherproof. The only we reason we don't use it too often is it doesn't have Bluetooth capabilities and it's only six channels instead of eight channels. But I have a feeling the guys in ARC Audio are working on that. Um, they have some of the best engineers in the entire country. I know because I've worked with them. They build a quality product that just doesn't break. Uh, Arc Audio 600.4 amplifier is one of my favorite motorcycle amplifiers. The only reason we don't carry Arc Audio anymore is size. Um, for We build a lot of competition and a lot of parking lot pimp bikes. So an average bike that we build gets two 800.4s and the customers demand everything in the fairing. So the two Arc Audio 600s are just not fitting in the fairing of these modern motorcycles. Um, that is literally the only reason we don't use their amplifiers anymore. But um, every time a bike comes in here with Arc Audio, it's, I mean, Arc Audio normally stays. We just add on to it. Um, PSM still one of my favorite DSPs. It's going to be hard to beat because that software is powerful. It's not very user friendly, but it's powerful. Uh, Moto speaker has always been a good speaker. So they tweaked it and they addressed one of the problems that most motorcycle speakers have and that's the fact that they have no mid bass at all. So with the redesign of this awesome speaker, it's a coaxial because it has a tweeter in the middle, but it's not really a coaxial. So this speaker has a lot more mid bass than the previous model and I know exactly how they did it because the tweeter is not in the center of the cone. The tweeter is a floating design. So it's a solid cone, which gives you more cone area, which automatically gives you more mid-base. Then they have the tweeter suspended over the mid-base driver. Then the wires run through here, and it goes to the passive six decibel proctive crossover. Um, first thing I saw that I liked is the tweeter bridge is metal, not plastic. Super heavy duty. Uh, tweeter is really bright, which you definitely need on motorcycles. And um, the specs say that the speaker will play down to 50 hertz, which I have confirmed, but will only do it on low power. So uh, all the ratings are 100% correct because they list this as a 110 watt RMS speaker. At 110 watts, it has 92 dB of efficiency, and at 100 watts, it played down to 50. I confirmed it. I'll show you in a second. But, you know, we like to run more power than it's recommended. So we have it on an 804 bridge. So the speaker's seeing um, between three and 400 watts. And we beat the hell out of it until the voice call started to smell funny. It's a really good sounding speaker at low power. Um, don't try and run double RMS. So actually around double RMS, around 200 watts, it's happy. Around 300 watts, it starts to get really, really unhappy which is fair, it's not rated to run that much power. So I listen to what I've been doing normally is when I get a speaker in the test, I put it in my office and I hook it up, and at moderate volume I just play music on it all day so I can get a really good feel for the speaker. This is a really good sounding speaker. This would fall into the drop and fit, rider series, no modification, weatherproof. So we dropped it into the Road Glide speaker pod the screw holes lined up. It's got a beautiful gasket on the back, a nice thick gasket too. But we did have to grind off that one little nub. And it's got standard car terminals. So you're either going to have to remove the Harley Davidson terminals. And what I recommend is just pull the whole plug out 
and run your new wires into the pod, put some connectors on it and plug it in, or cut the plug and solder the wires on. So if you don't want to cut the plugs, you can order another set of Harley Davidson plugs online. They're super cheap. I want to say they're $20 a set. So then you can have your virgin Harley plug that goes into your $2 Harley speaker and keep it off to the side and then modify the new plug, solder them on and have a nice solid connection or you can use these terminals. These terminals from Metra, that's the wide fork, that's the narrow fork, and that's the narrow fork, non-insulated. So these fit on just about every car and motorcycle speaker perfectly. And obviously these fit on the other terminal. So if you want to cut your Harley plugs off, the reason you'd have to cut the plugs off or get new plugs is Harley's reversed. So the Harley makes the fat terminal negative and the skinny terminal positive. So on Harley, there's your positive and it's skinny. That's your negative and it's fat. With just about every speaker on the market, it's the opposite. Skinny is negative, fat is positive. So it's the exact opposite of the Harley. So you either have to cut it off, solder the wires directly on, or crimp these on, or order another set of connectors and then modify those. Really good sound speaker, listen to it all day. Um, this would be our factory upgrade, our drop-in, no modification required. This fits uh, speaker pod, street glide, road glide. It fits in the lowers, no problem. If you have water-cooled lowers, it also fits in. You just need to run a 1 8 spacer, which is almost nothing. Um, the grills that we love to use fit on here perfectly. These are the Metro grills. So if you're going to use these in a Ultra with uh, pods on the tour pack, they will drop right in, no modification of the pod. And they look great with the grills that we love to use. No grills come included with the speaker at all. So these are the Metra BC SPG grills that I always recommend. So um, had pretty good frequency response. It's really hot on the top end, which means the tweeter is really bright. Um, the mid range is nice and even, and uh, it surpri at low volumes it plays all the way down to 50 hertz. It sounds really good. Once you start to crank up the volume, I strongly recommend an 80 hertz high pass filter to keep them from blowing up. But um, these t take easily, easily 200, 260 watts of power, easily. Just, you're in the danger zone once you go three, 400 watts. So this is not a competition speaker. Don't be bridging 800 watt amps across these. Um, it works really well with the 150 watts per channel that the Moto 600 provides. Uh, these are solid built speakers. Like the quality of the speaker is really good. The cone is really stiff. Like just by looking at the speaker, you know it's going to be a good sounding speaker, and it is. Um, drop and fit, factory upgrade. If you have some old tired speakers on your bike, no problem. Drop these in. Uh, they handle a good amount of power. They sound really. It's, um, I'm not surprised because it's Arc Audio. Arc Audio makes really good stuff. But um, I'll let you be the judge. It's really hard to describe how good a speaker plays unless you put it next to another speaker. So to make it fair, I put it up against our other drop and fit speaker the Hertz SX Neo 165. The Neo plays louder, but the Arc Moto CX6 plays lower. So the Hertz Neo is louder. So if you're going to run four speakers on a bike and you're not doing six by nines and you're not going to do eights in the bags, just know that these will play lower. Now you're going to ask, do they play as low as a Ground Zero coax, Yellow Basket coax? They do not. But another thing you have to remember, the Ground Zero Yellow Basket coax is not as efficient, 
so it takes a lot more power to let that speaker do its job. So if you're looking for mid bass on low power with a really good sounding speaker that plays even all the way across the spectrum, this is a great option. Um, plays lower than the Hertz, does not play as loud, but I'm going to compare them both side by side so you can hear the difference for yourself. Really good sounding speaker. You can't go wrong either way, no matter which speaker you choose. This is definitely a speaker. It's a contender. It's, it's definitely a speaker to add to your list if you're looking to build a nice four speaker, weatherproof, rider bike, drop and fit, no modification to your Harley. Run 100, 200 watts to each speaker. Run 75, 100, 150 watts to each speaker. The speaker will be happy and uh, you never have to worry about blowing them. If you get a little happy with the power and want to go a little over 150 watts, make sure you use a 80 hertz high pass filter to protect the speaker and the speaker will be happy. Check it out. I added an audio clip with um, some copyrighted music just so you can hear the two speakers against each other. But I'm only, I only uploaded that to Instagram. So you're watching this on YouTube. If you want to hear a different song where they go back and forth with each other for about 30 seconds, go on our YouTube, YouTube channel. <laughs> 